welcome back to Hippie Flower Girl. So today we are going to talk about our Still Air Box or Sab for short. So this is my Still Air Box. Uh, it is just a plastic container without a lid. Uh, they didn't give me the lid when I ordered it. So if you have a Still Air Box with a lid, please let me know how it works out for you. I have been thinking about like upgrading my Still Air Box, but I'm not quite sure. So, and then it has two holes in here for your arms, okay? These holes, I think, were like melted in. So I think you heat up like a metal circular thing and you just press it in here and then it will melt. Uh, I'm sure you could drill it, but then I think you'd have to sand it down so it doesn't scratch you when you're working with it. If you have one that has holes closer together, please let me know how it works for you and if it's easier to work with. Because I've heard that people say it's better, but I wouldn't know because this is my only one. So let's talk about how the Still Air Box works. So basically, you're just trying to create an environment inside your Still Air Box that has no airflow. That's why it's called a Still Air Box, because the air inside the box is still. And the reason why we want the air inside the box to remain still is because mold, spores, contamination, they're very light, so they're airborne. So if you have too much movement inside of your air box, then those spores will move around and it will increase the likelihood of contaminations. So your still air box does have two holes for your arms. So it will create a little bit of airflow inside. Um, I've heard that people recommend not using a still air box that have the glove attachments in so that it doesn't cause drag within your still air box. Another thing that is also important to pay attention to is when you use your still air box, the area around it should also be as still as possible. So you should choose a room that isn't drafty or that doesn't have a breeze and you should close all your windows and doors just to prevent any type of breeze from disrupting the sterile environment in here. First, uh, we need to make sure that the environment around us doesn't have a lot of airflow. So close all windows, all doors, make sure that there is as little airflow as possible before you start. Okay, so then the next thing I like to do is I like to clean out my still air box by rubbing it down with rubbing alcohol and I make sure to get into the corners because that's the place where the dirt and mold or whatever things you don't want in there gets trapped. Okay, you will see that my rubbing alcohol is green. Um, it's just a nice smelling thing called winter green and that's why it's green. I couldn't find normal rubbing alcohol and it works the same way. Um, I also like to wipe down my surface before I get started. So I will just wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. I will put six paper towels on top of the table. So the reason why I use paper towels is because you kind of want anything that is airborne within your still air box to sink down and stay down. So the if you spray rubbing alcohol in your still air box it will push everything that is airborne down because it is denser and then with the rubbing alcohol on the paper towels at the bottoms it will capture and hold that so that mold spores aren't floating around within your still air box and i will put my still air box on top of the paper towels and i make sure that there is like an edge sticking out of paper towels around the still air box just to make sure that it is completely sealed up at the bottom and that no airflow could come in under the still air box. I will spray some rubbing alcohol into my still air box to soak the paper towels and I also give the still air box one more wipe down before I start adding things into my still air box. Here I am adding my Argar bottle. Um, so just be careful, you need your Argar to be liquid when you add it to your still air box, but it will still be hot because you just pressure cooked it or steam bathed it. So just be careful, don't burn yourself. And then I will add my Petri dishes. They've been sterilized and they're still in their protective coating. If you've watched my videos before, you'll see that I usually use foil for this but now I'm using plastic so stick to the end of the video and then I'll explain to you exactly why I'm using plastic now instead of foil. I'm going to remove the foil and the rubber band off of my argar bottle but 
and I'm supposed to wipe it down, but I didn't do it. I would suggest that you do it, especially if it's, it's your first time. You want to decrease all possible risks of contaminations. I've been doing this a few times. Sometimes I forget things. I'll take out the stacks of Petri dishes from their protective coating and I'll put them in the still air box and remove everything else in the still air box that isn't supposed to be there. So you don't want them to open when you're moving them around, so keep them closed as much as possible. Now that I've removed everything that I don't want in the still air box, I must sanitize the still air box before I do any kind of inoculations or transfers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put everything in the correct position that I want it in, and then I'm going to spray down the still air box thoroughly with some rubbing alcohol. And I will leave this to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes just so that the rubbing alcohol push down anything in the still air box that I don't want floating around. Before I start doing any transfers, I will put on my gloves and I will disinfect them. I usually disinfect my hands and my arms up until my elbow because that's how far they go into the still air box when I am working. So here I'm going to start pouring my argar. If you are interested in learning how to make and pour argar, please check out my video above here. That's where I explain the whole process but for now we're just looking at how our still air box works so after i've poured oil my argar i'm going to leave the argar to set inside the still air box for about an hour or two and then later on i will inoculate or do transfers here you can see i'm about to do some transfers so i've left my petri dishes to set these are new petri dishes so you'll see that Previously, they were brown and now they're blue. So the brown ones are the mother ones. They're the original ones that I did in the first section. And these blue ones are the new plates that I'm going to do transfers on. What I do is I put in the mother Petri dish. You take off the parafilm and you wipe it down. Then I will also take my scalpel and I'll sterilize that before I put it into my still air box. When everything is inside that needs to be inside for me to do whatever I need to do, I will then spray down the still air box once more and I will leave it for 10 to 15 minutes just so that everything can settle. And every time I put my hands into the still air box after it has been disinfected, you must spray your hands so you can disinfect your hands as well. I'm also not going to show you how I do my argar transfers because I have a whole video linked here for you to check out where I go into detail on how to do it. The rule that you need to know about your still air box is it must stay sterile before you do work. So what I suggest, any objects you put in there, if you put an object in besides your hands, then the box is no longer sterile. So you must sterilize the item inside of the air box and you need a spray your still air box so that anything that is airborne floats down, gets stuck on the paper towels, and then you have a still air sterile environment. Your hands are different because you can't keep your hands in there the whole time. So that's why I recommend wearing gloves. You do not have to, but I prefer wearing gloves in case I have something under my nails, you know, I'm gardening or whatever. I put on the gloves and make sure that nothing that's on my hands can get into the still air box and I sanitize the gloves, my hands up to my elbow just to make sure that it remains sterile uh, when I put my hands in. So let's talk about some tips and tricks. Let's explain what's been happening. So let me just give you a little background information. Um, I was a bit delusional. I thought that I had contaminations on my petri dishes. And I thought, oh no, it's just the, it's just the, 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 the malt extract, because I've been using liquid malt extract and it's not working really well. I was like, oh no, it's just the liquid malt extract that is like coloring my mycelium into a black. No, I was wrong. That was straight up mold. But anyways, so I realized that the argar is sterile. I'm sterilizing my argar well, but my petri dishes are not sterilizing properly. And the reason is we upgraded our stove and oven, so now we have a gas oven and it doesn't retain the temperature that is required to kill off anything inside of it. So, and it also takes so much gas, so it's just not worth it anymore. So I was doing some research, research, and then I found out that you can put Petri dishes into a oven cook bag. You know, you have like those cooking bags where you put your chicken in and you spice it, you close the bag and it cooks in those juices and stuff. Basically using that. 
because I have glass petri dishes, so they won't melt. So I put them in the cooking bag, I closed it up, I put it into my pressure cooker, and I pressure cooked it with my argar for 15 minutes. So that's a new technique that I've been doing and it's been working so amazingly. I highly recommend it if you have a, uh, I highly recommend it if you have a pressure cooker and glass petri dishes. You can do it with plastic petri dishes if they're like PPP5, if they have that code. Um, but if you don't have those type of petri dishes, do not do that, they will melt. Okay, so here are the results of that first batch of petri dishes that I did. Here we have our duds. This one didn't grow anything. This one just grew some slime mold and so did this one. Here we have the ones that like, ugh, they didn't grow the rhizomorphic growth that I wanted. It's more tomatosin. I said it correctly this time. So, well, I mean, it's decent. I think the syringe is like three years old, so it's been in my fridge for a while. So I'm just using it. I'm just finishing it up. So, you know, there is growth there. I could transfer it. I'm going to see. Um, but yeah, so not anything interesting, like it grew. And then here are the ones I'm going to take transfers from. So let's see there, you can see the rhizomorphic growth that I want. This one has a lot on the sides here. I might have left these petri dishes a bit long. I should have taken transfers a little earlier. So you can see the rhizomorphic growth here and here and there. And then... We have a little bit over here, so I'm going to take that one. So I just want to give another tip. I haven't mentioned it before, but when you're doing argar to angar transfers, always start with the mother dish that is the best because you want it to have the highest chance of success. And then you move down the line to the worst. So I started with my best one, the had one that had the most rhizomorphic growth, and I did as many transfers from that as I could before I moved on to the other one. Um, when you're removing things out of the still air box, you don't have to sterilize anything again, you're removing it so you're not adding anything and you just need to sterilize your hands before you put them back into the still air box. If you have finished with, the, with your petri dishes and things like that and you need to seal them up with parafilm, because it's so difficult for me to move in my still air box, I usually just remove it and then put on the parafilm and I just take extra care to make sure that my petri dishes don't open while I'm putting on the parafilm. So it's your choice, do whatever you want to do, whatever you feel most comfortable. I've just knocked over so many petri dishes while doing the parafilm inside of the still air box, so I now just avoid it. Um, I do suggest, you know, if you are working with contaminated plates, um, let's say you're doing one transfer off of a plate and now you want to do more transfers, please just sterilize before you continue with more transfers because there is a lot high likelihood that the um, spores moved around and got airborne into your still air box. So yes, that is everything to do with this still air box. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to share, please comment down below. I love hearing it from you guys. And uh, then I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much. Bye.